Hey guys, so you don't need to sell your magic card to Alpha Investments anymore. We got a buy list. For a very long time, Star City Games didn't have the dual lands on their buy list. Uh, they added them yesterday. And now not only are they on the buy list, they are on the hot list, right? Which is their, you know, promoted things, the cards that they want the most. And theoretically, I think they also give the, the most store credit based on our additional store credit based on the hot list. So what is happening here? I had to investigate a little bit more. It seems like there's something called competitive EDH. So Star City Games is a little different from Card Kingdom. Card Kingdom has always really had its buy list. I've only seen one period in time where Card Kingdom got rid of the dual land buy list and they were not interested. And that was in the middle of COVID before PPP loans, stimulus checks and so on where they were probably like desperately trying to conserve money, what like most companies were at the time, right? So that was the only time, and as soon as that period was over, as soon as the PPP loans came in, uh, yep, they were back to buying dual lands. And Underground Sea was always the top of the list. So it is also the top of the list here. I, no, no surprise, right? Underground Sea is where it is because it's, uh, you know, you have the hot list, and it looks like all the dual lands and wheels on the hot list. Interesting. The reason that it's important to have two major buy, and I know Cool Stuff Inc. has a buy list and so on, but like these are the two one I, I grew up with. So it's nice to see that Star City Games has its buy list back for the dual lands. Because for a very long time, I think they were only offering credit. I don't remember seeing this, these numbers uh, even remotely this high. And I don't even think they were going to give you cash. Now they want cash. And this is different because Card Kingdom is more of a collection, collectible type of thing. This is player based. So this has something to do with playing. Star City Games is also the company that in one time they bought out TCG player of the enemy uh, enemy fetch lands because then they would promote heavily modern, right? They promoted modern and that they did that with the understanding that they knew for the next few years, modern would be very big. So when you talk about how smart are these people? Well, they control the market. They control the player base. If they want to do Commander 1 vs. 1 or Commander Pods, then they can do Commander Pods, right? And people have to negotiate. People have to play with each other. People have to do deals, right? That's kind of how poker is, right? Like if you make the top final table, a lot of times you're just playing for fun because you already decided what the split should be, especially with the bigger prizes. And that's what I expect to happen is people make tables and so on and you, you go from one EDH and you win that one and then you go to the next one and and then you got to do the same thing and there's bargaining negotiating lying bluffing right these are things that are already very common in card games called poker and other card games as well but here we have uh you know it's table talk right uh so here we have a very interesting scenario and it is that if you do want to be have the most optimized, and even if you're not super competitive, even if you're casual, you still probably want an optimized deck because that's how we are as Magic players, right? Uh, we have OCDs, if you will. Um, I would imagine, and I really would say this uh, with you know that these cards are only going to go up when you have. A play when you have the people running the tournament telling you, Oh, we need these cards and we're going to pay really solid. They're paying more than Card Kingdom, way more on, on Volcanic Island. They're paying the same. So they, they generally want these cards. They generally want these cards. This isn't like a Fugazi. No, no, they're paying hard cash for these cards. Okay. This isn't MetaZoo, right? They don't got no, nobody got no buy list for MetaZoo. I've never seen MetaZoo buy list in my life. And the whole time that the game was going on because it's not a real game you know like there you go right <laughs> i said it right if it if it was collectible and stuff like you wouldn't have to look at ebay you could just look at buy list and that's what i look at because the buy list they will take as many copies of this stuff as you have and that's very interesting from a collecting standpoint or even investing because when you invest you don't have one or two you got like 100 or 200 400 500 dual lands you do want to see somebody willing to take that many of them from you. And honestly, in my experience for Magic the Gathering, if you go to a a booth and you say, you know what, I got uh, 400 dual lands, 
they will not pay you just to buy this. They will give you a premium because they understand you take those dual lands to another booth, it's gone. Right? They're, they are there to buy. They are paying their vendor booth not to sell cards, but to buy cards in Magic the Gathering. It's very different from like Collecticon or Pokemon booths where the objective is to sell the Pokemon cards. No, the Magic booths have always, the objective has always been to buy as many cards. That's why they come with money, right? They come with hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy cards and collections. Uh, that's something I learned uh, a long time ago is like, whoa, so you guys are not here to sell? No, they have no interest in selling. Otherwise, you know, they wouldn't bring so much cash, right? If they were selling all the time, you know, they wouldn't have that much cash on them. They understand people like cash. So basically, dual lands to the moon. I mean, you could have invested in MetaZoo or you could have invested in dual lands. It's up to you. MetaZoo, uh, dual lands were at all-time low. MetaZoo was at all-time high. Some of you Timmy's decided to invest in the alpha investment cards. And, you know, hey, man, you could have bought a dual land. Think about how stupid that was. You could have bought a mother effing dual land for like, you know, $300, any of them basically at the time. But instead you bought a $820 booster box of uh, Nightfall, which is worth like garbage now. It's actually literally garbage. I think that that's a hilarious thing. <laughs> they were throwing this pallets in garbage. And then they got more. <laughs> they got more pallets to throw in garbage, man. If nobody bids on it, guess where all the MetaZoo goes? It goes to garbage. Um, that just tells you, man. Magic stands the test. You know, whatever I say about Magic, it has stood the test of time, man. Like, the duels are the duels. The reserve list is a reserve list. You know, I have this card called City of Traders. Every time I click the little button, it goes up like down $10. And it's like, okay, a draws your back, right? And, and a legacy and EDH, whatever it is, you know, people reserve list cards that do have, especially if there's something called competitive EDH, which I don't really know very much about. But of course, I mean, to optimize a deck, you need the dual lands. They're probably the first thing you get. So again, I have a friend, and he's actually a client of mine turned friend, and all he does is buy dual lands for me. And I'm like, what? where does this go? Oh, to my new uh, Warhammer deck. Oh, to my new Fallout deck. Oh, I want to make uh, this new deck. Dual lands, you can you can trade up, you can trade down. You can trade duels into a Black Lotus. You can trade duels into whatever standard modern card. You can trade, everyone wants dual land. You take your dual land to a trade night, I guarantee you, there'll be a horde of people willing to trade for that card. It's so liquid. It is the most liquid card in Magic the Gathering. Because it's a real estate. And it's prime real estate. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Bye, guys.